Items can be delivered. Oh, I forgot about this one. Gala suit layered armor, that's nice. I might mess around with that later. Hey. This is the lady. Hey. Can't tell what unlocked. We use catalysts. That should speed things up a little bit. I don't really see what that unlocked, but we'll go ahead and continue. Oh, this one might have given us the catalyst. Chief Botan. Ah, research. Botanical research slot. This should be another cultivating, cultivating slot for our stuff. We'll go ahead and do this one. This is, this is killing the Hornetar. Basically, we're exterminating bugs. Now we're going back to the veil. Should be a good opportunity to wander around, gather th some stuff, and continue to swap bugs. mentioned this before with the Vespoids, but when you fight bugs and you kill them with your weapon, they usually break apart and there's a chance for them to not break apart and you can carve their bits for items. But I wonder, I think if you use rocks or red pits, it's less chance for them to explode. These are torch pods, which are just lighting these things on fire. Let's see if I can find some stones. There is gear that you can craft from the Hornetars. It'd be good to try and not completely destroy all of them. Uh, if we go down to where we fought Radaban before... Now there's a whole mess of them spawn down there too. This is where we were looking around before with the effluvium contamination. also take a look and see 
on the map. Up. Yeah, we'll have the flies lead us there. Somewhere around here there's another there's another spot to open up a camp to. To look around and see. Right now the the bugs are probably leading me upwards towards where the hornetar spawn. here. Yeah, there should be a whole bunch of them up here. Two more? Head back down this way, and then should be about it. Yep, there I go. Pretty easy. The insect extermination ones tend to not be very difficult, unless you have issues getting the monsters to spawn in the right spots. Rather smart here too. I think they respawn after a set amount of time. stack of different Hornetar bits for that. Botanical Research Center has been upgraded. You can now cultivate more items. It's either going to be another slot or another set of boxes. Hopefully it's the former, not the latter. Just the awesomest. Now we have another slot for cultivating things, which is nice. And I think it added a bunch of stuff as well. What we'll do is we'll slot in flash bugs in the second slot here. 
And now we can start grabbing ammo for our flash pods, which is nice. the melder to basically create items. We'll look at that a little bit more later. I guess we can take a look and see what other optional quests we have. It would be good to do some canteen ones and get some better ingredients in the kitchen. Fungal flexin in the ancient forest. Deliver 10 gourmet shroom caps. This is another gathering quest. I realize these aren't terribly interesting to watch, but I'll, I'll probably use the, uh, this particular quest to talk about random stuff. We'll go to the canteen and eat. Swap out our items and we'll proceed. Back in the ancient forest, we are looking for rare mushroom gathering spots here. 20 gourmet shroom caps. I guess for this particular side quest in the discussion topic, one thing I did want to talk about in one of these videos is sort of the interesting journey of Monster Hunter as far as its impact on gaming and different gaming genres. Monster Hunter started out as a kind of niche franchise, well, it was niche for a really long time, on the PS2, and I think I talked about this before, but how it branched into... PSP, and then Wii, then Wii U, a, bunch, a couple titles on the 3DS, and then ultimately Switch, and then current gen consoles. But one thing that's been interesting as Monster Hunter has slowly gained in popularity is instead of being a niche title, the whole genre of quote-unquote hunting type games started becoming more and more of a thing on across all different platforms. I think other developers were seeing how Monster Hunter was becoming more and more popular and decided to take their own shot at a similar style of game where you're a character and you're going out to hunt large targets, you get bits from them, you craft gear and weapons, and you make better gear and you fight stronger targets. And as a result, there ended up being a lot of Monster Hunter quote-unquote clones where they, they would take the same premise and they would either make major or minor adaptations to that formula in order to create their own sort of unique brand for the Monster Hunter franchise. And I've played quite a few of them. A couple of the series that I haven't tried so far... The bigger, biggest one I could think of is probably the God Eater series. That was a series of games on PSP and possibly Vita. I think God, the recent God Eater games started coming out on current gen consoles too. But those were sort of promoted as kind of more quote unquote anime type games with. A, a more of a focus on storyline and characters, but the idea of going and hunting large monsters 
and getting equipment is still the main focus of the gameplay loop in God Eater, as far as I know. Another series which I think did probably the best job of the ones I've played in replicating the whole core loop of Monster Hunter while still being relative, relatively unique is the Tokiden series. And Tokiden was a... I think it was a Vita series first. I, I don't know exactly since... It's been a while, quite some time since I played the very first Tokiden game. But I know they had a couple console versions. I played them mostly on, on Vita since the games tend to work better for me on the go, have more time to play them that way. But Tokiden was a Monster Hunter-like type game, taking place in a sort of fictional Japanese, like ancient historical Japanese setting. And instead of monsters like dragons, wyverns, and what have you that you're fighting, you're fighting Oni and Japanese mythological-inspired beasts. And being a big fan of mythology in general, and monster lore, it was kind of neat seeing the sort of classical idea of creatures in Japanese mythology sort of combined with the idea of hunting them for their gear. And Tokiden had a base game, an expansion, and a sequel, I believe. It's been, been a couple years since I was playing the last one on Vita. But those games are really good. They're very different, but also very similar to Monster Hunter, if that makes sense. Same premise, but the mechanics mechanics of the game are different. And I believe Tokiden was created by the Tecmo Koei people, the folks known for the Dynasty Warriors games. They're the ones who did that one, I believe. And they did a good job. I'd like to see them return to that series at some point. Maybe make something like that for the Switch. I think the Switch would be a perfect console for a Monster Hunter-like type game. Maybe there's a camp spot over here I can unlock. Up here? I think it's up here. But I, actually, I don't think the campsite quest will unlock until I'm going on an expedition. Oh, no, there we go. Let's ask the head honchos. Alright, good. I can, I can get that taken care of. We'll head back up. I don't remember where all of the mushroom spawns are, but I'm pretty sure... They're all in the lower sections of the ancient forest, not all the way up here. What we'll do is we'll... We'll jump all the way back down. And keep looking. What we want are those rare mushroom colony things. Those are regular mushroom colony things. 